Greetings Options Traders. Thank you for joining us today and many thanks to my Patreon members for making this video possible. If you're new to options trading and would like to get some private coaching, please visit my website for details. In this lesson, I'm going to share with you a relatively simple way to generate regular cash flow with options. This strategy is called put selling. Upon completion of this lesson, you will have a much better understanding on how to sell put options, how to select your options, and what the risks are. In front of us is a one-year daily chart for Apple. The starting point is March 25, 2020, and the ending point is March 25, 2021. We have the 50-day exponential moving average, which is the blue line and the 200-day exponential moving average, which is the red line. At the bottom, we have the slow stochastics, which is a relatively easy indicator to use. On March 25, 2021, Apple was trading at around $119.70, and it was hovering between the oversold region and the overbought region of the slow stochastics. So on that day, I decided to sell one Apple put option with an expiration date of April 23rd, 2021, which was 29 days away. And the straight price that I selected was $109. So with Apple trading at around 119, the put option that I sold was about $10 out of the money, meaning that the straight price of the option that I sold was $10 below the market price of Apple at the time. Additionally, my put option had about an 18% chance of being in the money at expiration. The most important thing that you need to remember about put selling is something called assignment. Assignment simply means if the stock price ends up below the strike price of your short put option at expiration, you will be obligated to purchase 100 shares of the underlying stock at your strike price. Since my short put option had a strike price of $109, that means I will be obligated to purchase 100 shares of Apple at exactly $109 per share if Apple closes below $109 at expiration. And since Apple was trading at around $119 when I placed the trade, being assigned the stock at $109 per share is actually not so bad. As you can see on the chart, $109 is actually below the 200-day moving average. So if I get assigned, I have the opportunity to purchase 100 shares of Apple at a price that's $10 cheaper than the price of Apple on March 25, 2021. So I do consider that a good thing. But like I said, there was only an 18% chance of that happening. So if Apple closes above my strike price of $109 at expiration, I will not get assigned and I simply get to keep 100% of my original credit of $101. So when I sold my put option on March 25, 2021, I received a credit of $1.01. Since I sold one contract, I take the $1.01, multiply that by one contract, and multiply that by 100. That equals $101. So the credit that I received when I sold my put option is $101. And I get to keep all of this if I hold the trade all the way until expiration. Now let's fast forward to the expiration date of April 23rd, 2021, which is right here. And we can see that Apple closed at $134.32, which is above the strike price of my short put option. So that means I did not get assigned on the put option, but I did make $101 in 29 days. So this is a relatively easy method to generate regular cash flow 
with options. And because put selling has the potential of assignment, we need to have enough capital to support the assignment if it were to happen. So in this case, the strike price of my put option was $109. If I had gotten assigned, I would need to have enough cash to purchase 100 shares of Apple at $109 per share. So the amount of capital required for the trade is my strike price times 100 shares is $10,900. This is how much capital is required for this trade in a non-margin account. If I had sold two put options with the same strike price, I would need to have enough capital to support the purchase of 200 shares of Apple at $109 per share. So that would be twice this amount, $21,800. I know that some of you are probably thinking that tying up $10,900 for 29 days and getting only $100 in return is a bad thing. But let me ask you this. Getting $100 on this amount is almost a 1% return on the capital. So annualized, the return is almost 12%. So the question is, if you had this amount of money sitting in your savings account, or if you had a CD, are you going to be making $101 of interest in 29 days? Today's date is April 23rd, 2021, and interest rates right now are almost at 0%. So making $101 in 29 days using this amount of capital is not bad, right? Thank you for watching.